Well, I sure hope you came here today to praise and worship the Lord. Has he been good to you? Amen. Did he forgive your sins? Amen. Did he save your soul? Yes, he did. Has he been present with you and walked with you? Yes, he has. Well, I know you have come to praise the Lord. So let's stand, and I want you to sing with us just the chorus of this great old hymn, Blessed Assurance. <laughs> This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> oh, my. I was ready for a verse now. Okay. Good. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. It's always good to, to worship with Dad, and uh, he's such a blessing in so many ways. So thank you for being here with us today, and we want to continue this morning, continue to be in prayer. Uh, I'm sure Kenneth and Sandra and them have had a wonderful week as they've gone off and, and, uh, and served faithfully as they're serving other people this morning, and... Uh, um, or yesterday, the last couple of days, and so we're, we're so thankful for how God is using, using them as well. This morning, again, we want to welcome you. We're glad that you're here. I uh, hope you have a program with you. Uh, just uh, There are several announcements that are in there, but in particular, I want to draw your attention to next Sunday. So, again, help me out just for a moment. Next Sunday, we're going to be worshiping at what time? 10 o'clock, and where will we be together? Family Life Center. We're all going to come together for a very special service, and this is going to be a service to where um, those we've been praying for several weeks now, and some have already contributed and given, but where those that is God lays it upon your heart will have that special offering uh, to, to contribute towards the balance on our uh, church property uh, for this this. Um, uh, for this year, our, our primary gift for that is we seek to reduce the principal on that. And uh, as we move past that building program to, uh, to other areas of ministry. And so continue to pray about that as the Lord lays that on your heart. Whether it's $5 or $50 or $500 or $5,000. Or, you know, if you want to write a check for $5 million, I'm sure the Lord would take that too. And, and uh, we'll just, uh, uh, we, we might have to make sure these... AD paddles are working for Jerry over here, but um, but uh, you just, that's between you and Jesus, and so you pray about that as the Lord leads you, and God is, God's blessing, he's always sufficient, and we look forward to see how God will lead us uh, in the days ahead. Also next Sunday, we're going to have a special season of baptism, a baptismal service, and so we have some that are signed up and that are, are prepared to be baptized. And if you've not been baptized or you have a family member or someone that, uh, that needs to, um, please have them contact me as soon as possible so that we can be prepared for that. I'd love to hear from them uh, even uh, today, but uh, as soon as possible. Again, we're just rejoicing in how God continues to move in our church family, in our community. Um, and if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, um, just we can stop everything else that we're doing today because that's why we're here. We're here because we know Jesus or we want to know him. And, uh, and we want you to know him. And so today, make sure, don't leave this place uh, without talking to us about your relationship with Jesus, if there's any question whatsoever. And if you are a believer and you've accepted Christ, then you need to be baptized. Amen? And if you've not been, we have an opportunity. Amen? So we'd love, to, love for you to be a part of that. Again, thank you for being here with us today. And uh, this is a very special uh, day in our, 
as our nation in this moment remembers those that have served, um, no greater uh, no greater love is there than one lay down his life um, for his friend. And so we remember today those that have have laid and offered their lives um, for us. We live in a great land, amen, blessed by God. And we still seek to be one nation under God. Have we failed in some times? Yes. Have we wavered? Yes. But we believe that God's hand is on this country. And if we will commit ourselves once again fully to the Lord, not some White House or some party, but to God, His blessing will remain upon this land and its freedom will be proclaimed throughout the world. And I fully believe those who come in service and serve us through our armed forces and other ways too. But today we recognize them that it's a calling of God. And so we want to pray for them. And we want to tell you who have served and do serve. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Family of our armed forces members, thank you for giving of them. And the service that they offer us today. Let us not take for granted this freedom in which we stand. And so this morning we want to invite you. We're, we're going to take just a moment. And uh, for those of you who have served uh, or are serving today. If you hear uh, if you hear your Armed Forces Division song. Think, if you would to please stand. And we would just like for a moment to recognize you today. And uh, also we do have a little something for you. So make sure don't leave uh, here today and let, uh, until you uh, see one of us there at the back. And Miss, Miss Gail has a, has a gift for you. And uh, she'll help us with that this morning. You stand as you hear your song. The United States Coast Guard.
United States Army. Again, we want to say thank you to all of that have served. And uh, as you see those this week, make sure, make sure and share your gratitude. And let's not take for granted the freedom that we have today to worship God and to, to discover our purposes in Him and the responsibility that comes with it. I want to invite you this morning to, to join me as we uh, pray together today. Um, and again, I know there are many and various uh, needs uh, this morning, but would you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your goodness towards us, and we thank you that we live in a land of the blessed and the free. And Father, we give you credit, we give you praise, we give you glory, for we know all freedom is ultimately from you. And so, Father, today we ask that you would continue to bless this land. And, Lord, we ask that you would guide us. May your church once again be strong in this nation, that this would be a land that you would choose and desire to bless. Heavenly Father, we lift up those in our leadership in this country today, both those in the current administrations and the ones that are to come, whether federal or whether local. Heavenly Father, we pray today that you would draw them close to you, that, Lord, as they meet in those halls, as they meet, Heavenly Father, in those offices, and, Lord, as they meet with others around the world, we pray that you would give them wisdom. And, Heavenly Father, may they be. Lord Jesus, your instruments of grace in this world today. Use them for your kingdom purposes, we pray. And Lord, help us to be faithful to pray for our nation's leaders. Lord, help us to be mindful and grateful and prayerful for those who surrender themselves on behalf of us for our protection and for freedom around the world. And Lord Jesus, may we be known once again as one nation under God. Would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Would you stand again with me this morning and let's continue to worship the Lord together in song. In your hymn book, 746. I want to hear you now. There's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still In all of life's ebb and flow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every love as I go All my life was wrecked by sin and strife This God filled my heart with pain Jesus wept across the broken string Stirred the slumbering chords again Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Singing as I go 
Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials fall across the wave. Though sometimes the past seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Come on now. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. as I go Soon he's coming back to welcome me Far beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know If you want to, look in your hymnals to hymn number 508, and if you'll really sing, we'll let you remain seated, but it's hard to see, sing Love Lifted Me sitting down, but I want to hear you do it, all right? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now say, am I? Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling. In His blessed presence live. Ever his praises sing, love so mighty and so true, there is my soul's their song, faithful loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saved. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me.
Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus is coming again. Marvelous as we believe, glorious carol we sing, wonderful word of the King, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again, maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe Thank you so much, choir, and um, how about Matt and Jan this morning accompanying? What amazing job that they always do, but wow, that was good. Thank you all. Thank you so much. I want to invite you to stand with us this morning. Let's greet one another in the Lord Jesus. Tell someone you're glad to see them this morning that Jesus loves you.
Amen. Amen. <laughs> I was in preparation uh, for today. I was reading some things and came across a story that uh, caused me a little pause, and I'm not sure that I went with it the same direction that the uh, author had talked intended, but the story went something like this, and uh, there was a, a circus that was in town and a particular strong man that was there and he had taken an orange and had squeezed every last drop of juice out of that orange. All to the applause of the onlookers and the small crowd that had gathered around and, and then he issued a challenge to them. And he said, you think there is one person, I dare you to try one person among you that can squeeze one more drop from this orange. The crowd looked around for a moment, then all of a sudden, a thin, pale man, gentleman, kind of a Barney Fife type, if you would, hopped up on the stage and went up and said, I'll take your challenge. To which he grasped that orange and squeezed a full glass. It was quiet as it is now. Eyes had gotten quite large and, and the strong man looked at him and he said, How in the world did you do that? And he said, Oh, it's no big deal. He said, I'm the local church treasurer. <laughs> Love you, Jerry. Well, okay, others. I begin to think about that story, though. And I don't know about you. I usually don't feel much like the strong man. And I'm certainly not the Barney Fife that can squeeze a full glass. More often, I probably feel like the orange. That there's not a drop left. I know some of you have been to a place like that too. Where life has just squeezed every last little drop out of you. And you're looking for one more drop. You feel like those around you need one more drop. And you don't know where it's going to come from. But I want to remind you this morning. And I think I give all of my praise and all of our glory to the one who is able. For you know we serve the Lord of lords and the King of kings this morning, amen? amen? We serve the one who walks upon the seas and calms the winds. We serve the one that gives, gives the lame the ability to walk, that gives the blinded eye the ability to see, that can help the deaf to hear. We serve the one today who can give life to that which was dead. We serve the one that can look out at all those in need around and that are hungry and take, take just two fishes and five loaves and feed the thousands. We serve the one today that in one ultimate act can take upon the sins of all the world, descend into the depths of hell, and bury them there. And rise again with life eternal. Aren't you glad today? No matter how squeezed out you may be. That you're in the hands of the master. Amen. Who can do far above. What you and I can hope or think. You know really that's what stewardship is. Stewardship is placing our lives in the hands of the master, is it not? And let him do what we cannot. Stewardship very quickly reminds us of some things just where we've been. Stewardship, what does it do for us? What does stewardship do? Well, it does several things, but I just want to very quickly focus our attention on three things that it does. One is this, stewardship activates our worship. When we come to God as true stewards of all that God is blessed with, we come to the realization that it's all His. Amen? Amen? Always was, is now, and always will be. Everything that you and I have, even this very breath, is His. 
And so stewardship activates our worship. Stewardship also unleashes resources. You remember last week as we studied the parable of of Jesus Christ, of of the master who gave talents to his servants, and those who invested wisely and returned to him were blessed. And those who used those gifts wisely, to them more was given. Amen? Amen. So stewardship unleashes resources. And then stewardship enables the mission. It gives us the good old let's go. I want to remind you, and we'll spend just a little time in the book of Ephesians this morning. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of your own doing. It is God's gift. Now we're pretty good on that part, amen. Most of us can come to this place and confess that I can't save myself. Not, I can't give myself eternal life. It's only by grace and it's only by faith in him through faith that we can be saved. It's a gift of God. It's not the result of anything that you and I do. Not the results of worse, works lest any of us should boast. We can't brag about our salvation in and of ourselves, can we? Amen? Come on now, church. Wake up just a little bit. I need your help uh, this morning. I'm tired too, okay? But God's with us and he can help us. So uh, you might need to reach next and check the pulse of your neighbor over there just to make sure we're okay this morning. But uh, I want you to join in. We're in this together. And so the Bible reminds us that it's not a result of works so that no one can boast, but we are his workmanship. We're his workmanship. So for you, before you get too upset about who you are and how you're made and how you're put together, uh, don't forget who the craftsman is. God made you that way for a reason. It's for us to trust him to discover that. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. We're not saved by good works, but we're created for them. We're not looking at a salvation that comes by works. We're looking at a salvation that works. Amen? And God prepared all this beforehand that we should walk in them. There's a righteous expectation. Now I want to invite you to join with me. In Ephesians chapter 4, moving forward in Ephesians just a little bit to verse 7. And the Bible reminds us this, that grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now how big was Christ's gift? Well, it was this big, amen? Amen? Christ's gift was once for all. It was more than sufficient. And so consider this, grace was given to each one of us according to the measure It's of the kind of the magnitude of Christ's gift. God continues to pour out his grace upon us today. You're gifted in Jesus Christ. There's still a full glass in you. In his hand. And the Bible says, therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men or to mankind. And he said, he ascended. What does it mean? but that he had also descended into lower regions, the earth. How could he, the one who is above all things, how could he ascend except that he descend first? Amen. And so we're reminded that Jesus Christ descended. In verse 10, he who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. I'm reminded in this passage of the wisdom writing of, of the one who wrote Ecclesiastes and gave that to us as he sought among all the earth to find any reason, anything that was worthwhile whatsoever. And below the sun he couldn't find it until his gaze was lifted. To the one who made the sun. The one who was over all things. This is the one who has descended. In whom we have our blessed hope. Now I want you to focus in with me on these next two verses. The Bible says in he. Who is he? He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers. To equip the saints. For the work of the ministry. I want to propose something this morning. 
that what you and I are engaged in right now, although it may have some minute part to it, this is not the work of the ministry. Huh? We're getting ready for the work of the ministry, amen? What does the Bible say here? It says that he gave apostles and prophets and evangelists to shepherds and teachers. We've had, we've had this morning and are having now some Bible teaching and we're hearing from God through his spirit. I hope you're hearing much more than me today. If you're just hearing my words alone, that's insufficient. But we believe today that as we gather together that the spirit of God speaks and clarifies his word to your heart and to mine so that we can know what is the will of God. And as we come together in those purposes, I'm just merely a servant here today to encourage you, to challenge you, to remind you and myself of what God's Word declares, what His will is, so that collectively that you can do the work of the ministry. You know, some of us, we get those of us in the, in the church that have the challenge of trying to go and to find a pastor and God help you with that. I know we're a miserable lot. And um, I, I'll be the first to confess that. And, and uh, I know what an endeavor that is and what a challenge it is and, and how little sometimes you have to put up with. But when we find a pastor... We've not arrived in a church. You've not hired a staff to go out and do the work of the ministry. We're here to serve you as we do the work of the ministry together for the glory of God. So what is Christian stewardship? Continue on with me for just a moment. To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. That's our job together. For the building up of the body of Christ until we attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What is Christian stewardship? That's when you and I give all that we are to the glory of God and we become Christ in the world today. When, the, when people see us coming and going down the street, coming in and out of our homes and our places of work and our business and our schools, they see Jesus. That is, that is Christian stewardship. When we give of ourselves to God and he uses us for his glory. So that men and women and boys and girls can see Jesus and know the hope that we have today. So that we may no longer be children. And tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine. It's our expectation and God's expectation for you and for me that we know this book. Not just your pastor, but you know this book. Because there's a lot of stuff out there today, amen? It's a lie of the enemy and straight from the pits of hell. There are things that are being taught in our schools, and I thank God for the Christians that walk and grace the halls and the classrooms of our schools today that live their lives based upon this word because there's a lot of things that are being passed down. They're contrary to God's word and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. My friends, there are a lot of things in our culture from our government, and I don't care which political party or color you like that's not of God how far we've fallen as a country that we can't even tell today cast about by the wills and the whims and the doctrines of sinful people that we can't even tell the difference between a man and a woman 
in this nation that was once one under God. My friends, God's first institution was the family. It was God who created them male and female. Not only is there no reason or rhyme or or evidence through Scripture, there is today no scientific reason. It is only for that which to cover up the sinful nature of humanity that we even allow or entertain such things. And it is an indictment on the church in this land that we have not proclaimed the truth in love but with boldness because our precious boys and girls today cannot discover who they're to be in Christ Jesus. We can't even tell the difference. God ordained it that one man, a male, and one woman, a female, would come together as one and raise children to know him. My friends, it's not your church's job to teach your children in some baby Bible school who Jesus is. That's Christian moms and dads' job to do at home. Granted, we have our responsibility to support the family, to help you and encourage you, and to be there with you for that. But that's why God established the family. And if you're not in this book, you don't know it. Tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning and craftiness and deceitful schemes. But that's not who we're called to be. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we, you and me in Christ Jesus, are to grow up. Time to grow up, amen? In every way, into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Unfortunately, I even have to explain and express that today. And, and, and young people, there are a few in the room. I want to remind you today that love is not something that happens on Saturday night in the back seat of a car. Amen? If we believe God's word and everything belongs to him, ladies, what God has given you is his. And to be used to glorify him. And men, we're to respect that and to teach our boys to respect that. It's all his. Love is what we give of ourselves for the benefit of someone else. Sin is what we do when we take from someone else what is not ours. So what are we to do? If you and I are being equipped to do the work of the ministry, where do we start? Well, first and foremost, let's not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, amen? It's time for us to tune in, not to what's on the local social media or the latest YouTube or the latest news cycle or or to what the latest gossip is. This is a small community. Everybody knows everybody's business, amen? I'm telling you what, I live on the street corner, and I can almost hear the phone calls go every time I step out the door. We live in a small community. It's just the way of the world. But we need to be walking in the counsel of God. First, let us not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Let's not sit in the paths of sinners. You and I are called out, amen? 
called to be separate, to come out from among them, to be ye sanctified or set apart, made different from this world. Let us not sit with the sinners. You and I are supposed to walk following after Jesus Christ, walk holy unto the Lord, and not sit in the seat of the mockers. Those who say Jesus isn't who he says he is, you see. For what does it say of all of them? All of those will perish. But let us delight in the law of the Lord. Amen. Let's seek his truth together. I know that there are some things that you and I don't all always agree about in God's word but let me tell you something there's enough in there that is absolute and so clear that is it's is the nose on our face that we can stand upon that'll cause us enough grief and trouble and correct us enough that we need to live there amen come on now are you with me let's delight in the law of the Lord and let's be planted by the river of life Are you a conduit of life, a spring of life for those around you? Let's bear fruit in its season and prosper. What does the Lord say? You'll be blessed. Blessed is he who bears fruit. My friends, this is our season, isn't it? Amen? We don't know what next season may hold. This is our season. And for some of us, it's getting pretty late in the fall. Amen? You know? This is our season. We need to be bearing some fruit. We need to be seeing young boys and young girls trained up and come to Jesus Christ. We worry so much about what college they're going to go to so their their lives and their minds can be messed up by people that don't know how to do anything. Amen? That's how you get it. Now, be careful. There's some real wise people in the universities. I believe in education. I've got some. Some of you are going, I don't believe it. (laughs) Some of my professors are probably scratching their head too, but that's all right. My friends... The first thing that should come across our hearts and minds every time we see a young boy or girl or man or woman is do they know Jesus? How are you going to invest yourself? It's getting late in the season. Are you storing up treasures in heaven? Because it's all His. And this life is all that we have. Are you living for Jesus? It's your time to make a difference. You know, we all have different visions in life. Some of them are laughable. Maybe some of the ones that I have are laughable too. I don't know. But my friends, when I close my eyes and I ask God to help me see, I see a place here at Pleasant Hill where we come together in the name of Jesus and young boys and young girls are excited to come to the house of the Lord to learn about Jesus. And they're growing in the likeness and the knowledge of Jesus. They know who he is. They know what is in God's word. They know how to wield God's word. It's being planted in their hearts so that they might not sin against him so that they can honor their mothers and fathers that their life would be long so that they could accomplish the purpose that God has called them to, to bless them and to prosper them so that they can give him glory with their lives. I can see it. I can see it where we have young men and young women that are being trained up in the deeper things of the faith so that when they launch out into the workplace and into the higher levels of education that they won't be confused, that they won't be distracted, that they won't be deceived so that they can stand for the truth of Jesus Christ for the whole of their lives so that they can become that young mom or that young dad, that young businessman or that young businesswoman or that leader within the community or within the body of of Christ that God can use to make an impact and a difference in the lives of others. That's what I see. But my friends, I can't do that. I'm here to equip 
the saints to do the work of the ministry. What's your place? And are you engaged in it? I thank God for the blessing of these wonderful facilities that we have here. And and we are praying and seeking God to help us to complete the the payment for that beautiful facility that we have next door so that we can launch out into other ministries and things. But don't you know that one day every piece of brick and mortar and steel that is on this hill will be gone? What's important today is the precious souls that it's used to reach for Jesus. I see us moving beyond simply these facilities. But to where we are completely out of debt so that we can move deeper into this community to love people for Jesus. We've got some young men and women that are answering calls into ministry. And it's my and your job to help prepare them to do that. And we need to be able to do so. I know there's some other visions and things within our church, and I think they're, they have great merit to where one day maybe we could pray and God would enable and we could, we could have some land down to this creek and cleared out in a nice amphitheater where people driving down the highway could see the house of God and, and maybe a new sign and all those other things, and all those things would be great. Some even dream of a worship center where we can all come under roof for gatherings one day. All those things are nice and great. But my friends, what I see is a house full of people, whatever it looks like, who are in love with Jesus and can't wait to tell somebody about it. How are we doing? I'll close with this. There's a story of a beggar that was He was kind of one of the regulars, if you know what I mean. And he ran into one of of the more affluent members of the, the community and one that he knew he had run into before. And he asked him if he could spare just a a few dollars. Well, that regular benefactor had... uh, Uh, considered all the prior contributions that he had made to this particular beggar and thought about it for just a moment. And then he told him, he said, you know what? Uh, I think I can help you, but I need a little bit of help myself today. And would you be able to run down to the store and pick a few things up for me and bring them back? To which the beggar replied, I don't do errands. I just ask for gifts. May God help us, me and you, that we not be like that beggar. And the way that we live our lives, not speak to Jesus, I don't do errands. I just ask for gifts. My friends, God has made you to be his hands and his feet so that precious boys and girls and men and women can know him. If I can only be an errand boy for the master. Because I'm a beggar. And I need Jesus. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for finding me in this dirty and sometimes filthy world without anything to offer. Where every last drop has been squeezed out. But loving me enough to take me in your hands. 
and give me the most precious of gifts, the Son of God, the blood that was shed, the body that was broken, and now the eternal life that is lived. And you've allowed it to be mine too. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for cleansing me and all my filthiness. Oh, that I might just be your errand boy for what little time I have left. Father, I pray today if there's a person in this room that doesn't know the joy of your salvation, is caught up in the fears and the frustrations of this cold, dark world, that somehow, some way today, by the miracle of your Spirit and the power of your Word, that they would accept you, Jesus, your gift of life, that they would confess their need for you, that you'd save them from their sinfulness and prepare a place in heaven for them that their eternity be secure. Lord, today for the dear Christian in this room, I pray that you'd help them to look up and to see that they're here on purpose, that you have a plan and a calling Give them the courage to live it out. To stand for truth, but to love people. And to serve as you have served us. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, if the Lord's speaking to your heart in any way, you respond to him the way that he leads you to do. If you need to come as an act of faith to come to this altar and pray today, you do that. If you need to go to someone and ask for forgiveness, you do that. If you need to determine in your heart that God has placed a course before you and that you're going to follow it today, may it be that first step in that direction. Whatever that may be. But honor God and he'll fill your cup to the full. Would you stand with me? Stop. In your hymnals 489, the words on the screen, this familiar invitational hymn. If you need to come pray, you come pray. Do so quickly. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling Do not pass me by Savior, Savior Hear my humble so much for worshiping with us today and I hope and pray that today's not been hard for you but that it's been hopeful that you realize today that whatever days you have left they're to be good days for his glory God can use you and there's blessing in that Amen? amen and trust him with all your life Again, I do want you to be praying this week. And if God lays on your heart as we come together next Sunday to, to give a gift towards paying off the principal of that building next door, whether it's $5, $50, $500, or if God blesses you, you just want to give $5 million and pay it off and whatever else do, however the Lord enables you, that's between you and Jesus. But just know that we're praying to that end. And more importantly today, If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I'm going to be around and so will others. You talk to somebody before you leave today. 
And today, if you're a believer, but you haven't been baptized, you need to be. We're going to have a baptism service next week. And make sure and see me after service. We'd like for you to be a part of that, if you would will so. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd go with your people today, with all of us. Help us to be one in you, not to neglect our high calling, but Lord, to meet it and allow your grace to abundantly flow through, for you have so wonderfully blessed us. May we too be a blessing. Lord Jesus, in your name for others, amen. Amen. Amen.